Harrison Super Tuesday. We'll look at all the details in our From the Southern News bulletins. And you can also follow the events throughout this decisive day on our website and social media. Tuesday, only on Tolesur. The polls have just closed in Guyana's general election. We have all the news and analysis on this crucial poll. Outrage in Chile as President Piñera says it's sometimes women who are to blame for the violence against them. And migrants in Greece protest against overcrowding as Turkey's president threatens to let a million more cross into the European Union. Hello and welcome to Telesur. I'm Doris Polo in Quito and this is From the South on the day that Guyana went to the polls. Guyana's crucial general election has come to an end with reports of a good voter turnout across the country. The day passed off peacefully as people lined up from early in the morning. 65 parliamentary seats are up for grabs as the ruling APNU AFC coalition led by President David Granger is seeking to see off a challenge from the opposition PPPC. The election was called just over a year after the government lost a vote of confidence. The central issue for many voters is how any new New government will manage Guyana's promised oil boom. Official results are expected on Tuesday. Everybody calm, everybody, you know. You gotta do the right thing. Right? And what's the right thing? Calm and wait for the result. And so far, all the stations that we have, all the polling stations, the polling places that we visited, have had a very good turnout. Um, there have been peace and calm. The environment is very anticipatory. Everybody's just waiting, you know, to, to get their, get their uh, exercise, their franchise. However, they've so far, I've not seen any hiccups or anything. The, the, the process this time, I can say, is very, very um, organized. What they've done, several, like Monripo, has three different polling places, and they separated you according to location alphabetically. So when you go, there's somebody at the gate with um, your names, and they're checking, and they're telling you which line to join. So because of, th of that order, you know, people are able to finish in a, in a faster and swifter manner, and it's good. good. However, there have been some claims and counterclaims of irregularities. An hour before the polls closed, the PPPC General Secretary Barra Jagdeo posted a video refuting allegations that his party distributed fake identification cards to mobilize voters. Why would we want to distribute ID cards openly to people on election day in front of the entire media and everyone else? And even ID cards do not matter because even if you have a fake ID, you cannot vote. Yeah, there, your picture is on the folio and the presiding officers are controlled by GCOM. But this is just a pretext. Now, they are desperate. So Basil Williams and Amnali went up to Monrepo. They took some and supporters the there and they made office, this claim when Air is that the next now I just of saw it, that Anil I... Nandalal was somehow involved in distributing the ID. And, and they carefully recorded it and put it on their page just to mobilize and rile up their supporters. And, and so people would feel that aggrieved and may want to either come out and vote or, or create um, trouble around the polling places. So this is a desperate attempt by APNU. Uh, the commissioner of police has disappeared. He, uh, he promised to maintain the integrity of the polling, polling places, to keep everything peaceful, to allow people to be able to vote. Right now, they're blocking people at potential from voting. And he has abdicated his responsibility and, and his promise to the people of the country. 
The APNU AFC has since responded, calling the allegations false and mischievous. The coalition said its reports have found that voting proceeded in a peaceful manner, adding that it has received no reports of any incidents interfering with the normal electoral process. The APNU AFC further appealed to its supporters to remain calm. The APNU plus AFC has noted a false and mischievous statement released by the leader of the opposition, Mr. Barry Jackley, which follows a pattern of fake news that we have become accustomed to over the last three months from the People's Progressive Party. Where in today, 2nd of March, the coalition warned its supporters and the people of them that the People's Progressive Party would engage in that type of fake news and fear mongering to set the stage for their excuses for certain political defeat. I have made no statement calling for a cancellation report. I am very confident in the turnout that the people of Guyana oppose today, and we look forward to a result which will eventuate in the returning of the coalition to office. So let's go live to our special correspondent in Georgetown, Alejandro. Alejandro, polls were set to close half an hour ago. Tell us what the situation is there now. There is what, what uh, hello, so for greetings from Georgetown. What uh, started, a day that started very uh, calm and quiet uh, has been turning uh, sort of uh, troubling in the afternoon with these denunciations of fraud, ID, uh, fake IDs, uh, double personalities and all that. We were at that uh, Mont Repo, the uh, school this morning, uh, this uh, at midday, when uh, we saw this case of uh, two persons having the same uh, ID and, and disputing uh, their identity. Uh, it was very unclear, it wasn't violent at all, there wasn't any demonstrations, and we thought it was just one of those uh, small irregularities that in, uh, happen in every election. Uh, then uh, we heard about uh, a group of Venezuelans who were uh, carrying fake IDs uh, on the west side of, of the river here, and uh, th there were uh, some incidents there too, uh, involving the police and even the, can the uh, Progressive Party candidate, uh, Ifad Ali. So, uh, at this point, uh, we need to uh, get some uh, understanding of this, and for that, uh, we have a, a guest here, Dr. David Hines, who is a political commentator, and uh, he may uh, uh, clear up to us uh, what is the situation. Is it possible that this election can be rigged? Uh, Mr. Hines, thanks for talking to us. <clears throat> Thank you for having me. Yes, it is always possible for the election to be rigged. Um, we have a situation where uh, you can have in a community uh, five and six persons with the same name and that presents a problem when people turn up to vote um, so that, 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 that's a big problem there but the other problem is that there could be people on the voters list who are not here to vote let's say they're overseas and um, someone could get hold of their uh, identification card and then have somebody vote for them now if the presiding officer does not try to match the photograph on the ID card with the photograph on the folio that they have there, then that person can get through. So um, uh, the, the situation is pregnant with um, possibilities of fraud, and there have been instances, as, we, as you have mentioned, all day that um, uh, uh, there have been these charges. And uh, it would be exaggerated. Some people uh, in social media are talking about an uprising. Uh, is that a possibility to that this, the whole thing becomes violent tonight? Well, um, there's always the possibility of violence in a, in a situation that is as tense as the Guyanese situation is. But from where I stand, I don't think that it would escalate to that. Um, certainly um, not in the short term. I think um, we could see some reaction 
um, when the, the, the results are announced. We have a history here of the losing party not accepting the results of the election, and that's always a possibility. But I don't think that they're going to be, there is going to be any violence um, uh, in the short term, not, not tonight. Um, anyway, I think both sides are committed to a violent free election. And whenever we have had violence, it has taken a very long time to heal the society. The last time we had violence on election day was in 1997, and um, that's a long time ago. And um, as I said, I, I don't see um, this escalating into any kind of violence, certainly not in the short term. Well, uh, we were expecting to have some results tonight. They say they, there won't be any. Um, the, and some people are talking even of a week before uh, we get any final results. So what's the, 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 what's the customary uh, um, delivering of results here in, in Guyana? It's, it's the customary is about a week. It's about a week. That's customary. And um, uh, they, they try to be as meticulous as they can because boxes are coming in from far-flung areas. Um, there is always... Uh, 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 conflict over the counting and so they sometimes want to recount boxes to, um, to get it right. Now the downside of that is that uh, when you take a week to announce the results of an election, the anxiety goes up and there are rumors that are going and now with social media, something just has to go there and then, you know, it becomes quote-unquote the truth. And so it is in that interim that you're waiting for the results, the tempers begin to flare, and when um, small things are blown out of proportion, when the rumor mongers um, get into business, that you could have the possibility of conflict um, and could, could get out of hand. Uh, Dr. Heinz, uh, in, in 1997 there were no uh, social media, uh, social networks. Yes. Uh, now we have that, and so news for fake news, whatever, uh, spread uh, quickly. And, um, and this is what is happening uh, right now. Uh, also, the parties are able to uh, monitor the results that are published or posted on every uh, polling station. So parties will have the final result, uh, but uh, although, you know, it might be in one of, or the other interest not to uh, publish it or to uh, exaggerate whatever they have. So that, that would create, in this context, uh, uh, an even more conflictive situation. Yes, um, you know, uh, at the parties by midnight tonight would know, would have a general sense of how well they've done or how well they've not done because their agents are going to call into the command centers the um, numbers and the statements of poll and that will give them a rough idea but at the end of the day the election is not called until the elections commission issues um, an official count an official um, result but i want to go get, get back to your um, social media thing because um, i went around today on the east coast of demerara um, uh, where I um, function today and you get these calls that um, there are problems in a certain area and then you go there and you find out that it's exaggerated. Um, there was an instance where um, at, at, in a PPP stronghold um, there was a call that came out that um, there was there was a problems there were problems there and um, I headed on there and when I got there um, Minister uh, Anil Nandalal um, from the People's Progressive Party was there uh, and, and we got into a conversation about what happened and it was a, an instance of the two persons with the same identity and the first person voting voted for the person um, other than himself and then when this person came to vote he couldn't vote and um, uh, that flared tensions and it uh, you know got on social media and you hear that there's a problem um, uh, but when you get there you you manage to tone it down so I think leadership is extremely important in these circumstances I think the leaders when they get on the ground and they realize the situation um, has really been exaggerated um, they should be able to get together in the presence of the people and talk it down. So I think leadership is going to be very important in the coming days. Thank you, Dr. Hans.
So what's what we have so far, we are going to be following what the GCOM, the, the Electoral Commission, has to say. Thank you, Dr. Heinz, for talking to Telesur. Over to you, uh, Darius. Thank you so much, Alejandro. And Dr. Heinz actually mentioned the importance of leaders in this particular process as they are awaiting the results. And what he said is very important. And I mean, David Granger, he called on his supporters to remain calm. The same from PPPC leader Barrett Jagdeo. Thank you so much for joining us and giving us this update, Alejandro. Now, early in the day, Guyana's Prime Minister Moses Nagamotu spoke to Talisur as he went to cast his vote. It's a very polarized country. Citizens are watched in relation to their political allegiances, other than how your conscience would make you appear. And therefore, when polling stations are assigned, one has to be very careful that it does not give the appearance of a bias that someone with a known uh, political preference, his house has been selected. So the Elections Commission, as far as I am aware, has made a policy that they will minimize the use of private residents to avoid this perception that the elections could be uh, tainted. We also heard from social activist Yog Mahadeo, who said that young voters are becoming increasingly conscious of issues like the environment. Young people are becoming aware because guess what? We're looking at other places where oil spills would have affected. We're looking at, hey, we have the Awakrama Reserve, the largest rainforest reserve. If we are not careful, it's all gone for nothing. So we have to be careful, we have to know how we are safeguarding our environment, how we are safeguarding this country. Because if we don't safeguard this country, the politicians don't care. They have shown the propensity to not give a damn about the environment or about the people. All they want is to retain power. And again, earlier we were joined by Peter Wickham, an election expert at the Caribbean Development Research Services in Barbados, who explained that a poll conducted in Guyana last year showed the ruling APNU AFC receiving most support. Well, I mean, we, we did a poll in Guyana about a year ago. This would have been just after the vote of no confidence. Uh, and we found that there was a marginal um, in support, level of support for the government, marginally more support for the governing APNU AFC coalition. Um, this was consistent with my expectations that the barometer had not moved significantly since the past election. Um, my, my sense is that the same situation will probably be, be maintained now. Um, you know, the, the last election wasn't a full five years ago. I, and my feeling is that Guyanese were prepared to give the government an opportunity to complete the job that they started. Um, I, no, I don't know whether the campaign may have moved the barometer any, but certainly that would have been my reading at that time. And, and I mean, the sense that you get from speaking to people on the ground is that there has not been a dramatic, dramatic shift in terms of public opinion one way or the other, especially bearing in mind the last election was decided uh, by a few thousand votes, which is, you know, a few percentage points more. Um, one would expect this, the election result currently to be similarly marginal. Now, everyone says that Guyana's promised oil boom is uppermost in voters' minds. What exactly are people's concerns in relation to oil? Yeah, I agree. I mean, people want the government to get the best deal, and they also want the benefits of oil to trickle down to the average man in the street. And, and certainly that has been up front and center, the main issue of concern to people. I mean, Guyana has become wealthy overnight. Uh, and it seems as though Guyana's GDP has, has grown exponentially. It's certainly one of the fastest growing anywhere in the world. And it's all because of oil. So people want to ensure that government is negotiating properly, getting the best deal for the oil returns, and also that it will filter down as quickly as possible. Both parties have made promises regarding their ability. Um, my, my poll, our poll, Cadre's poll, demonstrated that people felt that the APNU AFC leader, certainly President Granger, uh, was more trusted regarding dealing with Guyana's oil wealth. I think that that was a significant uh, finding in terms of our poll. Um, the, the, the other reality is that uh, the other president, which would be uh, President Jagdio, uh, sorry, not President Jagdio, pre pre would, was not well known because President Jagdio was not on the list. I think that that was a significant point. So because people were looking at um, President Granger versus him from Ali, who is a relatively unknown figure, I think that that would have been a major factor. And the extent to which people were willing to put the new oil wealth in his hand um, may have been a challenge there. 
Yeah, some good points you raised there, and it, you mentioned that people want the oil the, the oil discovery and the funds that the government should be receiving to trickle down. But then there are reports that the government didn't actually get a favorable deal with Ex ExxonMobil. So is that a concern for voters? Yeah, I mean, the concern I have is whether or not people are in a position to assess whether it's a favorable deal or not. Uh, I mean, I think you understand in this business, what, regardless of what do you do get, people are going to say it could have been better. And, and certainly the opposition has been entrenched in a position that government got a bad deal. Uh, government has been entrenched in a position saying, look, we, we got the best deal possible under the circumstances. So that, that one is a, is a difficult one to answer. And I think it really has a lot to do with the extent to which people are actually in a position to assess objectively what is a good deal and what is a bad deal. Um, we only have uh, Trinidad and Tobago as an example to go on, uh, perhaps Venezuela to a lesser extent, because their oil exploration has been a lot more internal. Um, and, you know, it is always easy to, to judge and say, comparatively speaking, somebody got a less good deal or a better deal. Um, I'm really not in a position to say, uh, not being an expert in that area, but it really comes down to whether people are convinced that the deal could have been better, which is what the opposition is saying, or that the deal was a great deal, which is what the, the government is currently saying. Now, what type of issues would you say that Guyanese are concerned about other than the oil sector? Um, but no, I mean, everything is related because Ghana has a lot of poverty still. Uh, I think there's a feeling a number of people had that with all of this oil, your poverty problem should be solved overnight. Um, the George Young Hospital is in for a major boost. The government has indicated that that would be one of the early areas of priority for them in terms of rebuilding. But then there are also concerns about education. People feel that um, some of the money should go into education. And, and there have been some commitments made, certainly by the APNE. APNU, AFC, regarding uh, commitments to education. That has also been a concern. But I would say, um, you know, the ability to, to gain employment, certainly, um, the ability to alleviate poverty, uh, and then, yeah, health and education. I think those would have been some of the key issues. But again, it's all linked to, to this question of what would you do with all of this oil money, and will it flow to those areas that are needed uh, most? And I think that certainly poverty, uh, health, and education, those are some of the key things that people want some of this money to be spent on. Um, we've heard that younger voters, Peter and Guyana, are less committed to the old political and ethnic loyalties. Do you think that might be a factor still in these elections? Well, no, I mean, the old loyalties are definitely there, but I believe that one of the good things with the APNU AFC, their term of government, is that it has blended uh, a slightly greater mix in terms of the less politically fixed group. Uh, and that's really what the, the AFC brought to the table in that they brought uh, a mixed group of people who were former P PNC supporters as well as former um, PPP civic supporters. So uh, they were able to bring that dimension and, and the presumption is that young people are more inclined to go for that. Um, yes, I do think that Guyana is less polarized and certainly less racially polarized than it was before. Uh, but, you know, the, the factor or the section of people who are still racially polarized must be significant, uh, and it cannot be ignored. Now, Peter, my final question to you. We've seen the David Granger government sort of break away from the unity of the Caracom region as it relates to its position on intervention in Venezuela. So what can we say this, this election result would mean for Caricom and the wider region? Um, I mean, there's been, there's been that, there's been a breakaway, but I think that there's also a greater inclination towards unity. Uh, and and I, I do feel that Granger will work with CARICOM. Um, look, Gr Granger has uh, given the highest national honor to both the past chairman of CARICOM and, current, and the current chairman of CARICOM, Ian Motley. Um, he has shown a commitment to the regional grouping that is significant. Uh, and my feeling is that notwithstanding his own special concerns about Venezuela regarding the border dispute, that he will work with CARICOM towards finding some, some way of either having a solution or alternatively accommodating both concerns. Um, so I'm, I'm less concerned about his um, position. I appreciate that he has a special circumstance where Venezuela is concerned. They have an ongoing border dispute and they have an issue to settle. But at the same time, he, he seems also to demonstrate a commitment to CARICOM that is uh, no, no greater or less than, than that of, of President Jacques Dio that would have preceded him. And in some other news, 
Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro has met with members of various opposition sectors as part of the national dialogue to discuss plans to hold legislative elections later this year. This is the second time President Maduro is holding direct talks with opposition sectors as the government is mostly represented by Communications Minister Jorge Rodriguez. The opposition representatives include Timoteo Zambrano of the Let's Change the Citizen Movement Party, Javier Betucci of the Hope for Change Party and Luis Romero of the Progressive Advance Party, among others. Women in Chile are expressing outrage over President Sebastian Piñera's statements during the signing of Gabriela Law, which is meant to strengthen the existing legislation against femicide in the country. Now, during his speech, Piñera said there are cases in which the responsibility is on the victim. Social media users took to Twitter to express their anger. Lawmaker Maite Orsini said, when Sebastian Piñera blames the victims for being abused, it only corroborates his machismo, the policy of impunity and his rejection of women. Feminist movements are calling for a general strike on March 7th and 8th. Not only the men's willingness to abuse, but also the women's attitude to being abused. We need to correct the person who abuses, but also tell the women who are abused that they shouldn't allow this. As Turkey threatens to let millions of refugees cross into the European Union, migrants inside Greece have been protesting about overcrowding in their camps. Police blocked thousands of migrants who were protesting against deteriorating living conditions in the overcrowded Moira camp on Lesbos Island, which was built to hold fewer than 3,000 people, but currently has more than 19,000. The Greek government plans to build new migrant holding facilities on the island, but local people are violently protesting the move, saying that the island is at full capacity. Shifting gears now, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has maintained his call on the European Union to play its part in handling the refugee crisis triggered by violence in the region and gave Turkey more assistance with the Syrian conflict. Either we make sure together that these people go back to living an honorable life on their own lands, or everyone will take their share of this burden. Unfortunately, it's time that I leave you as we've come to the end of this news brief. You can find these and many other stories on our website, though, at telesurenglish.net. And join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For Telesur English, I'm Doris Polo. Thank you for watching.